Hello everybody and welcome once again to Feed the Beast Ocean Block. Today we are going to look at me mechanisms logistic transport. So let's get started. So we need to, several things. We need some uh, logistics transport, which is basically pipes, item pipes, and we need a logistic sorter. That's pretty important as it happens. So let's go down here and I've got this area set up. But before we start that area, let's just have a look at how it works. So on an inventory, it has to be an inventory. By the way, the uh, iron crafter or the crafters from extra storage or refined storage don't aren't inventories. They're just the output ports, basically, I think is what it is. So we take this uh, logistics sorter here and we put it on the, in the direction we want it to basically come out of. So I want it to come out of here and go into these pipes here like this. Um, and you can see that the direction is where the white bit goes. It actually looks like a sort of a pointy bit, doesn't it? it? Sort of sort of starts going down here. So that's the direction. If you get it wrong and you want to turn it around, you can use the configurator with shift and N, and then you can make it as a, a rotate or a wrench, I think. Just rotate. And then you right click this. Oops. I have to right shift right click it, do I? No, I have to use maybe I have to use the wrench side of it actually. I'm not sure which one it was. Oh it's gone to energy. I don't know how that's done that. Let's go to wrench. And so you can right click it like this. Now that's facing the actual same direction as we had it before. Yeah. And I think when you need to set it to rotate, which I don't ask me why that jumped to energy, that doesn't make sense. And then you can right click this. This time it should go in any direction we want it to go to. So for example, I want it to go up, I want it to go horizontally. I think I have to do it horizontal like this. I think you end, actually what you have to do is click the end that you want it to rotate. So I want to rotate it in this direction. So that's what the direction I want it to go in. And that's how that works. Actually quite neat. Let's, let's t take this back to items because that's the most common mode I want it to be used in any way. So now, what we can do with this is you can put it in recipes. So for example, here I've got some baked potatoes with me, for example, like that. And now what I want to do is I want to send the baked potatoes into this crusher here. So the first thing you can do is, right, you can set a recipe, you've got a new filter like this, and we'll say, okay, I want baked potatoes, so we can take the items and click it in the item stacker and then press it here. And then this has a colour of none. So this logistic transport will transport a baked potato with no colour. If you select a colour here, for example, blue, you can left click it and you can right click it, depending on what colour you want. And you go around, you've got your 16 standard colours. Like that, for example. Let's have aqua. Okay, we save this. So this is an item filter saying aqua. Let's take, for example, some redstone here and create a new filter for this one. Put that in here and we'll give this a different color. Let's give it color blue, save that. So what's going to happen now is it's going to take, it's going to colorize items. So the first thing you'll notice, if we actually put these into here, I wonder if this has got any power in it, because if it has, it will probably work and I don't want it to work. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so, what you can do is force it into particular routes. And I think if I can move this crusher back a bit here like this, let's put it say here. And then it's probably the wrong way around. This probably doesn't matter very much. Like that. It's actually face, no, it's all right. So this is then further away than this one. So this should, that means this, chest or crate to get the item. So let's just try it. Let's put some redstone in here and it goes out and it goes, it gets colored and it comes into this chest. So let's now put a diamond in here. It doesn't go anywhere. The reason for that is it's got no filter on it. So if we come back along here, I said it's got no filter in here, so it's not going off. And if you specify auto, it then does send it out. And it actually sent the diamond without any sort of encasing into this one here, as you can see. And the reason for that is it had a none color. So let's turn that off. Again. So we don't want auto just transmitting stuff to places it can't go to. So I take the diamond out again. And then let's put a baked potato in here, for example. And that's also going to go into this chest because it's the nearest one. So now what you can do, because I, I don't want, all everything, all the items going to this. I only want uh, redstone. 
So redstone had the color blue and you can take the configurator here and you can shift right click the this particular part of it. If you do the end, that changes its mode. If we click here, it then it is now blue. Let's take these items out of here like this. And then the crush it, we can then also do configure the crush it too. So let's have a look. At the moment, all faces are except for the top are inputs. Fine. And it automatically ejects outwards. So we haven't got anything to eject it to at the moment. But we could easily put a chest on top of this. Let's just do this. Or a crate. Crates are handy because they don't have any lids. So you can access them from you can open them whenever wherever they are like this. So now we can also say on here it has this transport config, transporter config, which we haven't looked at before. And actually it's got strict input off. And normally you don't want that. You probably want strict input on. And then it's saying blue is on the right hand side. Um I think we actually want effective is we want aqua on the on the front, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's frontwards aqua. We could also put it on the back if it doesn't work. So now when we put into here redstone, it's going to go out and it's going to go into this chest because that's the only place it can go to. If we put a diamond back in, it doesn't do anything. Let's have a look. So if we even if we set this to auto on, it doesn't go anywhere because it's got nowhere to go to. So if we now put a baked potato in here, that does go out. And it, as it, you can see, the box is actually slightly coloured. And we'll then come into this crusher and we convert it into um, biomatter, as you can, as you will see in a second. Uses quite a reasonable amount of power, but that doesn't matter. We've got enough seven of them. So seven are going to be in here. So that's the principle. So what we're going to do now is automate this, these machines. So what we've got here is a, a small, it's not a small crate. I've got a small crate in my hand. Let's move this out of my hand. We've got an iron crafter and it's got, oh, it says it's attached to a small crate, I think is what it's talking about. Yeah. So you, we've got different patterns. So I've got a pattern here to make one gold dust from one gold ingot, another one refined iron. So we've got also a basic um, control circuit, which uh, and in it was just one we got atomic alloy, uh, reinforced alloy, basic, well, basically just infused alloy. And then we've got these patterns in here. So what we want, this is why I've got these items down here like this. So we'll take this. In fact, first of all, I need to reconfigure it. I would like to remove baked potatoes out of it. Let's just delete that one. And the item filter for redstone is going to go into the metallurgic enriching factory. Sorry, the old. It doesn't matter it's ultimate, whatever it is. This just makes it go a lot faster. In fact, it's actually going too fast. So what we can then do here is we can do the same thing. So on the bottom, I've got set, this is input and output. And on the back, we've got power, which is fine, or energy. Uh, and ejecting is auto is off. So we'll now have a look at that one, and we'll have a look at the uh, transport configuration. So what it's saying here is on the bottom, which, which is the input and output, it's got cyan. And I want to actually make this strict. So anything that's colored cyan will go into here. So let's just take this now and change the color from blue to cyan. So it should be actually two colors, safe. But the color scheme I've used, if you go back, it was blue is, is the first one is none, no color. The second one is blue, I'm using that as an output. Next one is green, which is the first machine, which happens to be the um, metallurgic infuser. And the cyan is the, is the enrichment chamber. So we'll save this. So we can actually break this. It'll, it'll retain its settings between, between placings, as it were. So we're going to place this down here like this. And just check we've got the right one. Yes, I have good. And auto, we're going to auto output set to off. So it's not going to import output anything that doesn't have a color. Like that. So then we have to connect these machines up. So all of the machines are set up to be, this is a precision sawmill, are set up for input and output at the bottom like this. Let's just come down here and then put in these pipes. There is one exception. And I can't get out. <laughs> oh dear. All right, break them. So there is one exception to this. So here we have, uh, let's come back over here. 
uh, we've basically got these attaching to here and I don't want them to attach to here. I just want them attached to the uh, logistics transport. So we'll put another one, the logistics transport, which you probably just right click this block, it'll go up. Or shift right click the other one. So we need to disconnect these. So to disconnect, you just use the, the wrench and simply right click this twice. In fact, you'll notice that stuff moved into this chest when I did that. But what moved in was two patterns. I'm not quite sure why they moved. Out. Well, maybe that makes sense. Yes. So you can actually import and export patterns from a, a craft from the side. Okay. Let's put those back again. So here I've got a pattern that's producing multiple outputs. And that's why it shows as a pattern. This one here, I've actually got slightly wrong. We'll fix that. Because this, let's have a look at this pattern for, uh, basically that's this basic control circuit. So we'll look at the recipe for basic control circuits. So you need this in the metallurgy infuser. We can find some in loot chests, which you've found a few anyway. But, um, and it will use redstone here, this redstone sort of fluid, plus one osmium ingot. And it says it's using 20 millibuckets. So one redstone dust produces 10, but one enriched uh, produces 80. So which means we can use enriched instead of uh, redstone dust. We'd have to have two redstone dust anyway, otherwise it wouldn't work. So let's come along here to the pattern uh, machine and then put this one into here. And then it shows you the recipe. So one redstone, we would need two redstone dust, but let's use the enriched alloy rich redstone instead let's just put this and cut onto this recipe like that this will produce 80 plus we need four of these and in that case you can click the button and press four or you can do it this way you can click this one here and let's say back, backspace and put four in here and then click set so that means that these this combination osmium plus enriched will produce four let's update the recipe and go and put this back again And then we can put this back into this into here again and then we can start to make some stuff so for example on this thing, on this one here i've got redstone so if i put redstone on it it will go into the sign now what i've got to be careful with is to make sure that all of these are set to um enriched let's just do it with the configurator color none um no i have to do it on the machine itself sorry Transport. So strict input has to be on. Let's just make sure that strict input is on. Otherwise, things might go to the wrong place. I've had that before. You see, I've already coloured these up in preparation for this. So and they, they go through the colours in sequence. Purple. Next one will be dark red. Like this. And then we should have... This one, which would be uh, green. cyan, yep, yeah, that's fine. And that's the one we want to, that's already on, that's good. And then here we've got this one, it's actually got two inputs. It's got an extra input and some uh, inputs on here. But first of all, let's just set the conf transport configuration. So that's green is coming on the bottom, strict input on. And then on the side here, we've, we've set the front to being the extra one. So all I need to do for the front is just simply connect it in to this pipe. So let's just do that. So that's going through here. And then we can give this a color because we don't want all things coming into here. In fact, I think it'll only put what, what we actually decide to go in here. So to do that again, we'll just simply color this pipe here. Let's just go shift, right click it until we get to a color we haven't used. And I think the next one is actually aqua. So we'll use red, okay. And then we can come along here and we can say the extra input in this case, we need to add into this, say, uh, enriched redstone. So these are the ones which are the extra inputs, carbon, obsidian, uh, and rich, enriched redstone. I think those are basically the lot that you can actually put into that machine. So just to double check the colors again, that's going to be red. Okay. So we can set those up straight away. So let's just do that. New filter. Can't, I don't know whether there's a short way for doing this or not. Right, save that one. And I don't think you can duplicate them either. So let's, 
Let's go new filter. Let's do the diamond one next. And then we've got uh, enriched obsidian. And then the last one of these would be enriched carbon. Enriched carbon is, is one of the ways to make steel. So let's put that in here. This is why I've got these items on here like this. Save. Like that. Okay. So that'll make those and then they'll come into here. So next one we want to do would be make um, some of these infused alloys. So for that, what we would get out of here is we would get eight iron plus one of these will make eight infused alloys. So then we need to put in the iron ingots in here and they're going to go into the bottom of this ultimate um, infusing factory or infusing factory and the color for this one is green. So we need to make sure that these have got green on them. So for example, anything that we need to infuse like iron or osmium, we can put into this. So I won't do all of them now. I'll just click a new filter. No matter whether I have it in my hand or not, we can do it either way. Like this, and we can save that green and save that. So the output is going to come out and we're going to put this into a chest. Whatever's in here, we'll put into a chest or crate. Like this, but I could put the crate one up. It doesn't make any difference. But we'll, we'll put onto this a pipe and then we shall color the pipe as being blue, which is just got to get the middle, which I think is here like that. And then that becomes blue. So anything that will Nothing else will come into here except for items which have been coloured blue, which are, and they're getting coloured blue from the output. So we haven't done that yet, covered that yet, have we? Let's have a look at that. So here we've got the transport. Here we've got the output. I've set it to none. I want to set this to blue. For some reason, it went to, uh, and it also needs to auto eject, which I think is on like that. So the output's blue and the, the bottom is cyan. The same is true for the metallurgy confuse this one. I haven't done it already. Um, output again, we want it to be blue. Oh, it's strange. It's going the wrong way. Actually. I miss it for some reason. It goes, goes none, and then you go is green. I think that's just one thing. Strange like that. So let's try this now. Let's put into here. Um, one redstone dust, which I think at the moment is in this chest here. Let's take it out of here. And that should produce one enriched um, redstone. So let's have a look, put this into here. And you watch it, it's going to go up here. You see it's colored box. And then it's going to go into the enriching factory, ultimate enriching factory, come out again. Then it comes back. And this time it's got blue and it goes straight into the output chest here like that. Fantastic. So what we need to do now is to import stuff that goes into this chest. Before I do that, I'm going to do a few tests on this. So let's come along here and make another recipe. We have got some, I already programmed up some of these recipes, didn't I? So let's have a look. Um, what am I going to get rid of? Basic circuits. Haven't done that one yet. I've got this infused alloy. So you can shift, left click this one, shift control, left click it. And then we can say we want to make one of these. Start that and then click start. And that you'll hear it going out straight away. So what's happening is one is coming in here, the red, the redstone, enriched redstone that should be. And then the other one is coming out here and you'll see that we're getting eight items coming out and they should be these alloys, infused alloys. Yes, fantastic. They look sweet, don't they? <laughs> I always like, well, like the way those look. So all we need to do now is to import this back into the network. So what I have to do is just break this one piece. I don't want an extra piece. I think I did it slightly different when I was testing, but now it is. So I've got uh, an import here from refined storage. So you can click, click that onto that. And then all the items are going to be pulled out of here, as you can see. If we don't like the speed that they're going at, we can simply put the speed upgrades into here like this. And that'll go through it. We could also do the same on, on the iron crafter as well and put more into that. Things just go faster. 
not essential for this demonstration. Um, so the next machine along here would be the ultimate compressing factory. And I'm not using that very much. I don't think I have any recipes for that. And then the ultimate crushing factory. The ultimate, in order to make uh, enriched obsidian, recipe for this is dust. So we need refined obsidian in the enrichment chamber to make one of these. But the, the refined obsidian recipe for that is made from an ingot. We can also use a metallurgic infuser to do obsidian dust plus diamond dust. But we've got seeds for doing this, so we don't need to do that. So we'll just use the ingots. So here's the ingot, the refined ingot one. So I need to go back to the crusher here, check what colour we've set it up to be. So that's light blue. Okay, so let's come along here. I think by this stage you've probably already got it. So we need ingots of refined obsidian. I also need it in gold too. So that's light blue and save that one. I will also do an ingot of gold. which also wants to be crushed to light. Because again, we've got seeds which are making um, the ingots. They're not making dust light blue save that. And then you can come along here and you can say, okay, this is what we've actually got here. You'll see I've got items coming in here like blue. Let's test this. So let's put in, for example, one uh, refined obsidian. Not coming out. Well, we've done that wrong. I should go into the ultimate crushing factory. Oh, I have. I've got this. Should be purple. I must. I must have got them the wrong way around. Because it it can't go into this machine. It's not coming out. Okay, no problem. It's good because it shows us that we can actually edit this information. So either what this one should have been purple. So I simply just left right click it. It goes back there. Save that, and you'll see straight away it goes out into the, into the crushing machine and comes down into here. We won't see what because it's too fast now, it's exporting it too fast. And therefore I need to fix the one that is, well, the gold one. So that's purple. Simply right-click it and save that. Okay, good. So basically, I think that's everything. All of the machines, are, it's the same stuff. So, for example, in here we've got precision sawmill. Um, let's have a look at the precision sawmill. See, they, they start off with basic, go to ultimate, and then you end up with it. It's always the same, I'd say. Oh, and these, the, the manufacturer of this one is but it's still casing plus ironing, it's plus infused alloy, makes a precision sawmill, and the uses of that, you can make, um, basically cut stuff up, as you, wood, as you would expect it to do. So, for example, all of the, the logs get converted to stripped logs. Interesting, you actually get, from a trap chest, you get all the items back again. Well, it says 75% of chance of getting this back. Uh, so, for example, if we look for, I wonder if it's, it's 29 pages of this. I was just wondering if we're looking for oak, stripped stripped wood. Yes, yeah, stripped, any stripped wood, Merrill log, will produce six Merrill planks. So it's just a two-phase process to go through to get that. <laughs> you get 100% chance of getting wool back from beds. I didn't realise that. So that's a, a recycling mechanism. It's not bad as it happens because I got a lot of, I had a lot of beds and I was just throwing them away. So that's it. I don't think there's anything else to look at in here. Mm. No, I don't think there is. I think I've covered all of the stuff. I just haven't programmed all of these in yet. We just have to keep adding recipes uh, to putting them in. In fact, I've done a few more. I've got this one here, logistics processor. I can put this one back onto this chest here. And then it's got different colours, so we can make diamonds. I didn't put the diamonds in here. So, for example, a diamond. If I put a diamond, let's take this diamond out of here. So that was cyan. So let's do a new filter for diamond. And that's going to make enriched, of course, diamond. Cyan. Save that. Put the diamond in here. It'll then go through the enrichment chamber here. Oh, this one. And we'll produce one enriched diamond, which is then going to go out right here. So basically, that's it. So that allows us to automate all the mechanism. And the next thing I'm going to be doing with the mechanism, which is probably next episode, is to carry on with this. And we shall do other stuff with it as well. 
as I said, we'll be doing other stuff with mechanism. Really, what I'd like to do is get up to the um, different types of power. But having said that, I've actually finished doing what I needed to do with the power pots, which is all this kind of key evolution stuff, because they really do take a lot of effort to make. Anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.